One cool thing about traveling the country is you get to discover little places that are still making things that have been around for a really long time, and there's just a handful of them left. This is one of them. This is Shearwater Pottery Showroom in Ocean Springs, Mississippi. Shearwater Pottery's been in business for many years. It's very collectible. It's not super cheap. It's all hand done. And this is the only place you can get it. They do not distribute to retail accounts. So I am hoping that maybe they have some discontinueds or some things that we haven't seen before. You can see some of the other old buildings. This was quite a complex. Pottery is made in another building here on site. We will follow their instructions. This is a very good reference book that was done quite a while ago about the company. Look at these fun things they've made over the years. But we're here and can see them in person, so let's take a look around. Teapot, cool trivets, wonderful vase. I love the design. Look at all of the detail in that. But they do some really neat single colored laces as well. I have this drip links uh, here with the texture. Too dark green. Shearwater started in the 1920s, and this is their museum where so you are going to see a bunch of things in here that have not been in production for some period of time. We can show you these items. We are discouraged from touching them, I can understand why. But you can see these really great drip glazes and variegated glazes. The hand-thrown body, you can tell there because the bands are all of a little different width from being done on a wheel. There's a lot of handwork in sheer water pottery and that's part of what's interesting to people, but also the glazes and the interesting forms. I really like that. Very modernist crystalline glaze. And they've made everything from lamps to vases to functional utilitarian ware, but all really interestingly decorated. I like this with the frogs and the fish. Shearwater pottery sells well on the aftermarket because it's never been available anywhere except right here where they make it. And because of that, there's a bigger collector aftermarket than there is a supply, unlike so many companies that overproduced where we have a glut of things. Surewater is something that is in short supply. A lot of different bugs. That was a 1990s line edition. The cat is really something I especially like this piece here. I'd love to show you the bottom, but again, they're asking us not to touch. So let's see if we can see it from underneath. It does have a signature on it, but we'll look at some of the newer pieces so we can show you signatures. There's one they did at the showroom where we are right now. Lots of miniatures. This plate showing them actually at their craft. I love this color glaze, this rosebud color. You don't see very often. The cats are all really interesting. They did monochrome glazes variegated glazes and then look at the painting on these guys. This is so fun. This is interesting because it reminds me a little bit of Margaret Pilling from California and boy Pilling pottery is really valuable and expensive now. The alligator is great. Can't wait to look and see what they have that might be yeah. discontinued that we might be able to buy and bring out onto the market. There's a great owl. That's a neat shape in the back there. That reminds me of some of Frank Helga's shapes. And then there's this. This is, does not look like anything I've seen by anybody else with this sort of decoration. Walter Anderson was the fellow who was the brainchild behind this. He painted this box. This box survived Hurricane Katrina, which hit this place pretty hard. We are right by the Gulf of Mexico. Shearwater Drive is actually waterfront here. And then here's some really neat pieces. Some of these remind me of 1930s Brayton Laguna and Franciscans Catalina wear of that era. It's just a really interesting and varied group of merchandise. I really like the vase in the back with the dancers. This animal has a great glaze color. Really fun to get to show you this. I've always wanted to see this place in person. And I'm glad to get to take you with me.
here it is. We are just skating in. This is outside of Meridian, Mississippi in the town of Marion. And you can't read it, but with Amish and Old Country Store, also is Penny's Flea Market and Antique. So we're gonna see what's here. I do see old stuff. This is a good sign. Dar's a bar. These big loudspeakers are cool, $100. I did an appraisal on some like this, and that's actually a pretty good deal, but they're huge. Coffee mill's pretty, but 20% off 600 is finally getting to a price it should sell. Miramar is a company from California you don't see a whole lot. It is indeed dated 1956. One of the Los Angeles area potteries. Purple is one of the good discontinued colors at Fiesta, in my opinion. The lilac is the really good shade, but this is cool too. $20 for a place setting. That's pretty reasonable. That is lead free. You can use it every day. You can put it in the microwave or dishwasher. That's why it's still being made. This is a flea market, so we're going to see all sorts of stuff. Pretty high price on the whole there. $85 is a little much. Weller pieces. RS Pressure 125 on the teapot. Sub antique furniture, it's chilly in here, I'll say that. I used to run a place that was like this, a big old empty barn. That's a lot of booze. But unlike this, we had more real vintage stuff. Now this is old here, Austrian. $48 applied fruit, it's cute. It's not high-end porcelain from the time. This I like though, it's $30. Let's see if we can suss that. It's definitely got some age. It has appropriate wear. It looks like a Venetian sort of finish, although the shape is almost Viking-like, but that blue color, that tint that I'm getting from it tells me otherwise. Well, this got pretty far from home. Propellers from model planes can be cool, but this one is in reproduction. So are all these bread bowls. So, so far I'm not finding my stuff, but there is still potential. We'll see. You just keep trying. I have found some good stuff in Southern flea markets before for good prices. Royal Copley, I just put that piece out to sell myself. Well, the bowl is Capo de Monte. Of course, it's the later style and you see the less definite design in terms of the painting. It's just not as thoughtful and not as painstaking. Some Majolica, I have not had luck with these kind of figures, but I like his googly eyes a little bit. $20 does not seem like a bad price for him. Yes, crazy eyes always are a good seller. However, a chipped brim is a chipped brim, no matter what you think otherwise. Pigeon Forge Pottery, the way they have that in quotation marks makes me think they don't know Pigeon Forge. This is a nice size for $12. I think this might be worth buying. Pilgrim glass used to call it to make these candles in the late 60s. It was very clever, but they were held together with a resin at the top. And if that resin is dried out and broken, then you get this unevenness and pieces can fall out. And you can tell that's what's happened to this. And the glue is stained. So for that reason, I wouldn't buy it. But if you see one of these that's clean, it was a great idea. A really good way to use a waste product in glass back when they were just starting to think a little bit about such things. It's the center of a lazy Susan. It says orange bowl with lid, but that's California originals. Oh yes, and it has a very clear mark as such. That color is the giveaway though. Duncan and Miller Swan in Chartreuse. A very 50 shade. Along with some Sooner glass. And some of the Sooner Glass Cornucopia down here. Along with a kind of cute piece here. It says Satin Glass Pitcher Vase. It actually should have had a lid. It was a bar at one time. That time being about 1900. We see this more in green. They want 28 for this. It's the boopy pattern from about 1960. They're cute at the holidays. One of a pair of urns in a garniture set of Victorian era. This is a Mexican made glass bird. Really great tail. I think some of the Mexican stuff is really cool. 
and some people are collecting it. It usually has a more bubbly base. But the pull on this is really great, and the color is really fun. Everyone has capitulated so much on clear glassware that it's practically being given away for free. Somebody is going to start picking up on some of the old patterns and the better quality pieces and start collecting those again. I did sell a piece of Fostoria American. I always sell them this time of year. This is a great design, but like a lot of companies that were the last in their line, they're not as well known or thought of. This is Falls Graph. It's hard to read through that black glaze, but I think you can get it there. $25 is a fair price. It's very 50s. It's a little stout. It looks like it probably had a lid that was formed to fill that, so I don't think it's completely intact. But even without that, Falls Graph is just not the easiest thing to sell, except for some of the dinnerware pieces and completer pieces. Bells. Let's see what their prices on bells are. They have a bunch of Fenton. Not that I don't have Fenton galore, but just for fun. $10 with glass for it. That's actually a pretty good price. This one is milk glass. $10 with C. Griffith's name. This one is a quilted green teal. $10. It seems like all of these are $10. So the question is, are there any that are worth buying for the signature? I mean, these are not bad prices, but given that I already have a lot of Fenton, I don't really need to go crazy with this. But I do think that perhaps this first one, because of the glass sprit, would be the one to buy, because the glass sprit seems to glow in interesting ways under a black light. And I think that's the appeal. So I think for $10, i am going to give that one a shot. Let's see if there are any others over here that do the same. There's Wheaton Glasses Avon Cape Cod, and because we're at a flea market, I'm expecting they have this price the same, and they do. 20 minutes. Okay, thank you. And then this one is a blue with a floral that looks to be Fenton. Some other makers here, and then custard. This is, of course, is what we're looking for. They are priced the same as well. That is glass for it. We're definitely taking that. And I think this one back here is going to be a farmstead. And that will do just fine. So we have found a few things here. Very interesting. You never know. I mean, this whole collection was probably in one person's house here 30 years ago. And it's all made it here all at once. And I just happened to come along. Because look at all the other bells as well. And I bet I'm their first sale. Merry Christmas. Of all the 50% off clear glassware, I see almost no patterns I would think would be collectible. And that is the first problem. It is important to know the difference. Blue geese on sale. Flea markets oftentimes end up being furniture sales places. These all seem to be traditional, but not really very old. Sometimes you'll find a modernist piece in a place like this, or you'll find something cool, although this is a little much. This corn shucker is $4.75, but wow, it's complete. I sold one of these for about half that. You get tired of lugging them around pretty quickly. Now, these are something in bas relief. Wow. $200. I have sold pairs of these from the 60s before. They're very schmaltzy. Some interesting old stereo equipment. Not much really necessary in dinnerware. I do like the mixing bowl here from the 1920s or 30s. And jukes, do not enter. Hmm, of course that makes me curious to see, but it looks like mostly books and, ooh, a guard. Okay, we'll leave now. A lot of these satin glass pieces are reproductions from the 1990s, so be careful. Look for obvious evidence of where there's a lot that were done by a place called double A imports, and you can look up their catalogs. And I suggest you find some and take a moment to study them if you're buying any of this Victorian looking satin glass, because a lot of it's coming onto the market now. These reproductions were popular about 30 years ago. 
And this is a nice opalescent bulb that is not a reproduction. 95 on the green Fenton wheat is certainly a fair price. I always like this low bowl by Franciscan in the Coronado pattern. It's a very early piece in this line, and so it says G. McBee for Gladding McBean, but that is Franciscan. That was their parent company. Franciscan was the trade name they developed shortly after they introduced this line in the late 1930s. Ooh, those are calcified on the right there. $60 on the apartment size. Texaco Star is newer though. Dick Pope, but I'm driving the wrong direction to get water skis. Even Team Snoopy at $175. What have we here? Wow. 50 bucks. That is one garish table stand. It's the wrong size glass. It needs some help, but boy, that could be really something in a very amazingly over-the-top way. Do we dare? I yeah, yeah, yeah. Bob Newhart's favorite fondue set. Couple of railroad lanterns and some kitchen clocks up there. That's cool. Halfway down the hall. Yeah, I couldn't, <laughs> he couldn't help, but I've got a tax number, too, if you, uh, I'll make a copy of it. sure thing. Well, there's a whole wing I haven't even been to, but I'll have to come back next time I'm down this road. I'm going to use the wipes like we were asked to pick this up. This one's priced at 300 Sure water is not inexpensive because it's all handmade and low production. This fish is awfully cool. $50 on that. That's a possibility. Sure water does sell for real money. Let's see if there's a signature so that people would be able to identify this. It's covered up by the tape there, but there is the Sheer water signature on there. I like the little horse here. A Christmas cow. <laughs> Appropriate for now. $45 on that. And the fish base is fun. There's the Shearwater Pottery. 23, so it's dated as well. So things come in and out of the line, and the dates will tell you if it's current production or otherwise. Love the Pelican bookends. Those are really fun. They are 115 for the pair. I think those are rather fantastic. Like a lot of other pottery companies, they also are making jewelry now. These little pins are $15 each. That's cute. I might pick one of these up. These scarab wall pockets are so great. I had to move to another room because a big crowd came in, and this place is so lively right now on Black Friday. There's a ton of people here, and I can see why. Look how neat that is, too. And then you can get custom order plates. They've got a bunch of examples up on the wall here. I'll show you more later, but they're in the room with the big party of people who are buying a bunch of stuff. Here we go with some of the maritime figures. I always have really liked these. The sailor with the anchor here, S23. A couple more sailors up here. I like this guy with the striped. They're all a little different. $27, that actually seems pretty reasonable. I think he may be on our list. You might take a look at a few of these. We have this baby beauty here. She's priced at 25. She's awfully cute. And then there's the funky fish for 35. Definitely seen some fun things here. There is a big art fest that is done every year here in memory of the founder of the pottery and they bring in a whole lot of artists and they sell some of those in the gallery here as well. This is interesting, looks like martial arts of some sort. $50, now there's the sheer water mark I'm used to seeing, also with the number in it, but impressed rather than just inscribed with a device. So good to know that there are two marks being made currently. This looks like a strange parental situation here. I can't say I understand that one. I think some of them with the all over paint decoration are just so much fun. So here we have the cat and he's already got a fish or two inside of him. $75 on that one. 
This is, is this supposed to be Puss in Boots? Tiles and trivets are kind of neat too. This squirrel is very dynamic, I think. Priced at 30. This is James McConnell Anderson, who I believe is a third generation member of the family here. And the Pirates. I have the one drinking for sale currently. I see that one is not available now, so I'm glad I have him. These are a little taller than the ones I've got, though, and they're priced around $40 each, which actually seems pretty good to me. But some of these have been in the line for many, many years, and they're a lot of fun. $25 on this guy. He looks like he's about to shoot his musket, I think. These guys are having a lot of fun in their band. These smaller ones are $25 each. The larger ones are more expensive. I like this too. It looks almost like Lino Cut. This is another James McConnell Anderson piece called the Oyster Togger. He's getting the oysters out of the bayou. And then they have these by regular order as well, apparently. The various pot saucers, dishes for your dresser, however you want to use these, but they have a neat variety of hand-painted designs. I do think this stuff is really fun. These guys carrying the treasure chest are pretty great. 55 on that one. Here are more of the plates that you can order. I like the single fish. It's a very strong pattern. Some of these are a little more a swirl of colors, but some of them are also very distinctive and stand right out. Decorators and finishers and all the stuff that still goes on here. Well, some Fenton Bells and I are sailing off into the sunset here in Mississippi. It was really great having you with us. And now... If you enjoyed this video, check out this one. Also, click thumbs up to like this video and check the description for information about our Patreon, our memberships. We've got a lot of different levels with different perks and bonus videos and early content. Also, please do check out our website, theantiquenomad.com, for appraisal help. And we'll see you again for more adventures in the antique and vintage community soon. Bye for now.